Good afternoon, and thank you for letting me testify in front of you this today. I am here to testify on the governor's budget and SB 431, uh, which is the property uh, reform, property tax reform bill. So I'd like to say, as far as um, SB 431, um, I'd like to sh share with you the um, descriptive language that I've received from my municipalities as far as what this bill would do to them. Catastrophic, devastating, fatal, ruinous, and that refers to the changes that are in this bill 431. Just to give you a little highlight, um, with the car tax now going to the state, that would leave an 8% hole in my North Stonington town's grand list. This is an agricultural town that has no other way to um, increase revenue or grow its grand list, so to speak. So I'm asking you to reject these portions um, and this particular bill because it will destroy our municipalities. The $50,000 uh, homestead exemption in Groton would create a $9 million hole for the town to try to fill. And in addition, in Groton, which is the largest city in eastern Connecticut, everyone thinks New London is, but it's not, um, it's Groton, it would leave a $6 million void in the town's revenue stream just for cars. So the damage and the repercussions are lasting with these changes. They are devastating and you have an opportunity to prevent those on 431. The impact of passing a bill like this would be massive property tax increases for the residents of, the t of those municipalities. And quite frankly, just to show you what we're dealing with along the shoreline is I have one area that has 60 homes for sale. They cannot sell their homes. And one of the things that people look at when they come to buy their homes is what the property taxes have done over the last 10 years. That coupled with flood insurance makes it impossible for someone to sell their house if they want to leave Connecticut because they're feeling that they're overtaxed or the retirement income is not going where it should because we tax Social Security. So that's all I have to say about 431. As far as the governor's budget, there's a few areas that I would like to um, highlight. I am not a fan of this budget in general, but I'd like to highlight the boat tax. And I sat before this committee two years ago and argued vehemently about lowering the sales tax on boats because we had lost close to 15,000 boat sales to our neighboring states because they were taxing their boats at zero. So it is easy to just cross the state line and buy your boat there, keep it there, go out to dinner there, and everything that goes along with having a boat. When I talk about boats, I'm not talking about yachts, I'm talking about $20,000 boats or under, a Boston whaler, a skiff, sometimes something that somebody could maybe spend the night on. Most of them don't even have facilities on them. But they give an opportunity for middle class families to have a family vacation when they can't afford to go away. This can be financed over time and it gives them a little break and they get to spend time on the water. We were successful. We lowered the boat tax from 6.35 to 2.99. And guess what? The revenue went up by $200,000. We collected $200,000 more with a tax rate that was half of what it was. And the revenue stream before was declining. We had lost $300,000 in tax revenue from 2016 to 2017 with the rate that high. If you increase the tax rate on boats, you are jeopardizing nearly a thousand jobs in the state of Connecticut. These are marina slips, these are people that work on boats, there's tradesmen, and of course there's the brokers that sell boats and the salespeople that sell boats here in the, Connecticut, in the state of Connecticut. It will have a devastating effect to shoreline communities. I can't say that strongly enough. It will have a devastating effect to marinas and it will have a devastating effect to the bottom line here in the state of Connecticut. This is proof that when you lower the tax rate, you can increase revenues. You have it in black and white. All right, the Senator Summers, if you could just summarize your testimony. Okay, Thank you. I have other areas that I'd like to touch on, but I would implore you to not get rid of the exemption that we passed through a bipartisan measure here after how many sessions are going continually to phase out the tax on pensions. That was one of the things that people were just hanging on to that are retired here in the state of Connecticut, that we had made progress. Also, please do not get rid of the exemption on Social Security for those who are retired. 
and do not divert the funds from the special transportation fund that we just voted a constitutional amendment for. They are stripped out, leaving the special transportation fund zeroed out so that we are forced to look at tolls. We are flying in the face of what the people of Connecticut voted on, and we have a new governor who has just stripped out and undermined everything that people just voted on last November. So I implore you to do that, and I know we'll wrap up if anybody has any questions. Thank you very much, Senator Summers. Representative Terry Wood. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Senator Summers. I think you made some very good points. The one point that I think needs to be highlighted is you stated the difference between boats and yachts, and a lot of these people do have smaller boats, and it's not the mega millionaires that many people think, and we need to keep that in mind because this, will, this is the middle class who's, who's having those, and we need, we need to continue to support them and keep the tax rate low and competitive with other states. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Representative Claire Dietria. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Summers, for your compelling testimony. Can you expand a little bit more, talk a little bit more about the boat tax um, and or the car trade-in? Thank you. Yes, thank you for asking me about the car trade-in. That's another um, really important issue that people on this committee need to be aware of if you haven't dived into it in detail. Um, and I have actually personal testimony on that. Uh, we would be the only state, I believe, in the nation that would be charging you the full tax when you trade in your car. So in our family, we just recently had a car that had to be traded in um, because of its terrible gas mileage and had to be traded in for another used car. And I believe the tax that was paid, because you're not paying, you get the exemption on your trade-in, uh, was about $800. If this bill goes through, that tax would have been $2,500. That will devastate the automotive industry. Um, I looked, at, looked up some um, information that they had put out concerning what that could do, and it could um, decrease used car sales, and most of us, like me, I have to buy a used car, um, by 25% in the state of Connecticut. That's equivalent to $3 billion, with a B, dollars of economics in the state of Connecticut. It could, if you look at it over a yearly basis, it's close to $87 million in sales tax for the state of Connecticut. Why on earth would you ever buy a car in the state of Connecticut if you're gonna pay the full value in tax when you can cross any border within an hour and a half and purchase your car there? There's absolutely no sense in that whatsoever. And the automotive industry is the one that really is the tempo of how our economy is doing here in the state of Connecticut. And I've probably used up my time, so I don't want to, if anybody wants to know about boat tax, little boat tax, dinghy tax, canoe tax, not mega yacht tax, please come talk to me. Thank, thank you for your testimony, but to go back to the car sales tax, so if we're having, if we're increasing that sales tax on used cars, then less car sales equals less money letting employees go and possibly closing our businesses. So how is that good for the state of Connecticut? Absolutely. And we're not not taxing them. We're just right now we give you the exemption for the car you're trading in because you've already paid tax on that. So you're really double taxing somebody who has to trade in a car, whether it's old, it doesn't get good gas mileage for whatever reason, buying another car, whether it's used or new, you're double tax taxing them. That is going to lead to a loss in auto automotive uh, <laughs> jobs. It's going to lead to a loss of revenue for the state of Connecticut. I think when I testified two years ago, I said, give us five years on the boat tax. Give us five years and you'll see the trend. Well, we've seen between July and, and January an increase with a tax rate that's nearly half of what it was. And before, the trend was reduced income coming into the state of Connecticut. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Carney. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Summers, for your uh, testimony. Uh, I, I do have a, a couple of questions, um, and you may have touched on this in your testimony, but does Rhode Island have a sales tax on boats or a tax on boat storage or boat labor? That would be no, right. zero. Can you tell me in your district, how far are you from Westerly? I don't want to be, I could walk to Westerly. I mean, no, Westerly. we seriously are, we're a border town. 
we have a bridge in Pawcatuck, Connecticut, which is part of Stonington. Half of it is in Westerly, Rhode Island. Half of it is in Pawcatuck. That's how close we are. Pawcatuck services Westerly's ambulance. So literally, you walk across the street and you can buy a boat with zero tax. Or you can walk back on our side and you were doing a little better because you were going to pay 2.99, um, but now you're going to be paying 6.34. So any person is, that has any kind of brain in their head is going to go to Westerly, Rhode Island and buy their boat. And Plus, then when you buy it there, you're going to keep it there. You're going to dock it there. You're going to gas it up there. If you have a family that can go out to dinner to the little you know, outdoor thing that does ice cream, you're going to do that in Rhode Island. You're not going to do that in Connecticut. So we have to be smart about how we um, are competitive. And the bottom line is you've seen the results. Can you imagine if we went to zero? We probably would have seen even larger tax revenues coming into the state of Connecticut. 95% of the marinas hired people. 95% of the marinas, I have 30 in my district, they hired people with a lower sales tax rate because they were expanding their businesses. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know, my district is is similar to yours. I have a lot of marinas. I see the economic impact uh, that they have on my community. Uh, my community is not really that far from the Rhode Island border. Probably you could get there between 30 and 40 minutes um, to Westerly, Rhode Island. Uh, and, I, and I think it, it is so important that we not move forward on, on increasing the taxes on boat sales and implementing a sales tax on boat storage and boat labor. Uh, this will do uh, severely damaging uh, effects on our marine industry, not, and not just our marine industry, you shouldn't say that, also our restaurants and hotels. You know, my district, it's, it's unbelievable the amount of economic impact and the amount of growth that happens in the summer months, and this will do severe, severe damage to our state and the communities many of us represent live in. So I appreciate your testimony, Senator Summers, and I'll be there fighting with you. Representative Devlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator, for your testimony. Um, listening to the discussion, especially with uh, the good representative here, also from the shoreline, you know, in uh, transportation, we heard testimony from a representative who says that he travels to Rhode Island to buy his gas because it's cheaper than in Connecticut. So your points about the um, broad impacts on the industry, I think you are very valid. Um, Representative Carney also raised that impact on hotels, you know, all of the other things that people would spend money on, and this budget also increases the hotel tax. Um, it increases, well, I, I don't think there's anything it doesn't touch, quite frankly. Um, but do you have any comments in that regard as well? Absolutely. Um, the, the district that I am proud to represent is Mystic, and that is the number one tourist destination here in the state of Connecticut, which contributes millions of dollars to the state's economy. We would have the high, we already have, I think, I believe, the second highest tax on hotels. We would have the highest tax in hotels in the nation, which may be fine and dandy, um, you know, if you are somebody who, that doesn't make an impact on where you stay. I would like everyone on this finance committee to think about what we've seen with the boat tax. It's just a small little example, but if you think about the idea that when you lower the tax rate, and when you lower the tax on someone who is on a fixed income for Social Security and you lower the tax on pensions so someone has more money in their pocket to spend here in Connecticut and you lower the tax and you don't double tax on used car sales, you expand the economy. There's, it's, that's what happens. We've seen it now, black and white, in just a short period of time. So I would like to take that and expand it so we can get our economy growing. We have already experienced two of the largest tax increases in Connecticut's history, and look where we are today. We don't want to make the same mistake. This is the wrong direction. Well, these proposed tax increases would blow those last two out of the water. But, um, you know, I, I appreciate your point also about the uh, rescinding the phase out on Social Security and pensions. I'm sure, like you, this past summer, we had a chance to talk to lots and lots of people at their doors. Many seniors very concerned about their ability to stay here, and many who, quite frankly, didn't understand that that was actually happening. And when it was explained, they actually felt hope, like maybe they could stay here. So I appreciate you raising that and uh, for your 
depth of testimony today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Needleman. Thank you so much, Senator Summers. <clears throat> I, um, I represent the 33rd District, and of the 12 towns that I represent, 10 of them are on the water. And, um, and I have some friends here that are, are going to testify the same thing you've talked about with regard to the boat tax. I think that this is one case. I'm not going to broaden it as wide as you did to every other area that we tax, but because we're so proximate to um, lower tax states, I think that um, going back to the higher tax on boats would cause huge problems for all of the towns um, on the water in my district. So I want to thank you for testifying and um, want to let you know that I'm not in favor of raising the boat tax again. Thank you. I'm glad to hear you say that. I would like to share with you one phone call that I got after we lowered the, the, the boat tax. It was from um, a man who lives in Mystic. He actually is the caretaker for the Mystic Cemetery. And he said, thank you so much for doing that. I actually can afford to buy this boat now, and I'm going to keep it in Connecticut. And it's a small boat, but I can get on the water with my son. Um, and they have an adopted son uh, that they take care of who has IDD. We can get him on the water now. The most complaints I got about the boat tax, I will tell you, is people that purchased their boat in June, right? Because this didn't go into effect until July. So I just want to share that. Representative Meskers. I want to thank you for your testimony. I'm down in the lower end of the state on the shoreline. And um, I would reflect the same concerns you have. Um, we're looking at a marine industry that we need to support. I think a boat tax, conceptually, you know, sitting here on bonding revenue and finance, every tax help, helps balance the budget. And I would, though, with the caveat, say, until it doesn't. So the capture of economic activity is one of my focuses in terms of trying to help the, the governor and the legislature balance the budget. But if the boat tax goes back to six and three quarters, 635, and the sales happen out of state, the capture is zero on those sales. Well, what we haven't even dealt, dealt in, in length is the sales, whether they be of luxuries or small boats, the commissions that are on those sales that are done in Connecticut are commission income and revenue for the salesperson who sits in Connecticut, who then pays 6.9% income tax. So not only do we lose the 6.35 that we're hoping to capture, but we don't capture the income because the sale doesn't happen in Connecticut. So my concern on economic activity is that we get the, the broadest capture of revenue and don't drive business out of the state. And I think your testimony adds to that. On, on hotels, I can't speak. So, but you know, my, my concern is that the net is broad, it's as equitable as possible, but that I don't want to hear of any activity happening in New York or, New, or Rhode Island or New Jersey away from us. So I think we have to be sensitive to tax rates on a lot of the different issues in sales. Thanks. Senator Summers, you don't have to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, sorry about that, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Representative Cheeseman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Quick question. You touched on the removal of the exemption for trades on automobiles. My understanding is it would also remove the exemption for trades in boat purchases. And I wanted to, just wanted you to comment on that because I think that would have a very damaging effect on boat sales. It's actually, you know, it's the same effect that it would have on car sales. The one thing is I do believe that boats, they hold their value much better than a car. That's why I will only buy a used car, by the way. Um, that, so you can have a 20-year-old sailboat and sell it for what you, you know, purchased it for 20 years ago. They hold their value, especially used, you know, sailboats. I can't say that for powerboats. I, I, I don't know much about that. But it would be the same thing. You've already paid the tax on your dinghy, your sailboat, your mega yacht, and you're trading it in for something. And you had that exemption for that that you've already paid. Um, and now you'd be paying it on the full thing. Why would you ever buy a boat or a car, used car here ever again in Connecticut? We were sending the wrong message. And um, as far as employment, um, you know, things like if you buy a boat here because we keep the rate, you know, I would argue it should be zero, but I don't want to even go there. So let's say we keep it at 2.99. You're going to keep it here. You winterize your boat. 
winter storage is a, is a large economic driver here in the state of Connecticut for people. We don't live in sunny Florida where they don't tax boats and um, or Social Security, and, but it's nice so you don't have to store your boat all winter. So um, there's all these different industries that are connected to just having a boat in someone's family, whether it's the ice cream place you talked about, whether it's you know the person who works the diesel mechanic on your boat whether it's the people that you know sell you the paint to touch up with the barnacles are there's this all this we don't want to lose that to our neighboring towns they are cleaning our clocks it's time for us to get serious and exactly like you said representative look at the economic impact and the trickle down effect of what our policies are doing we've been doing the wrong thing for a really long time. This is showing us that we've made one right choice. Let's not go back. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Summers.